Hey, good afternoon. I'm Daniel Guest, and welcome to the Imagine Golf Podcast, brought to you by Imagine Golf PhD. You can go to our site, imaginegolf.com, to see all of our offerings, including our free eBooks, our practice plans, our golf books and videos, um, or to book a lesson with me at our state-of-the-art studio right outside of Philadelphia. Or you can sign up uh, for our free videos and tips that go out once a week, every week, by simply dropping us your email. And of course, you can always take a virtual lesson through our partner, the golfliveapp.com from anywhere in the country. We currently have like 100 students now, I think it is, in seven different countries taking virtual lessons. So um, look, today's a, uh, I don't want to say historic day, but a pretty historic day. It's our 169th episode. Who ever thought, right? I think I heard, man, that uh, 10, if you do 10 podcasts, you're like in the top, you know, 90% of all podcasts. Most podcasts don't even get past 10. Um, and this is our first one live on camera, if you would. So I'm uh, with the esteemed Jacob Molinar. Hey, Jake. Hey, Daniel. What's going on, man? Um, a full disclosure here. Jacob is a world long drive champion. And full disclosure, I'm his swing coach. All right. So I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, be geeking out on this guy for a little bit here and uh, definitely biased because uh, I think he's going to win it all, to be candid. So, uh, but what we thought we'd talk about today is, you know, like, some of the there's a lot of more similarities to golf to long drive than uh to golf than most people think about and most people don't even know really what long drive is right i mean i i say it out in public if you if you haven't watched it you're like well, well what is that you know what is that is it a game is it a sport right so i thought we'd go through a couple of things um uh the usual questions that we ask four different questions if you would and and uh just get kind of a, a, a professional's uh expertise if you would and their vision on uh, on the sport right so why don't you give us kind of like a background, if you would, how you started and, and uh, where you're at. Oh, uh, yeah. So I started about two years ago. Um, I always hit the ball pretty far, I thought. Right. Um, I started playing golf when I was 12 years old. I uh, just played um, for high school, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, just competitively. Never really thought about long drive. And you're 27 now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So never really thought about it until two years ago. I went to a simulator just like here right. and, you know, just hit a golf ball and my uh, ball speed was 195 miles an hour. Yeah. And let me uh, stop you there. 195 with no practice, no nothing. That's pretty big. Yeah. So, um, I was like, you know, it went like, uh, I think I 350, yeah, 350 yeah. yards. And, um, somebody, one of my friends was just like, Oh, you know, you hit it pretty far. Like, why don't you try out long drive? Right. And I was, you know, and then that was when it all started. That's um, crazy, right? And a little bit else about my background was I did uh, start doing strength and conditioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I went to school at East Stroudsburg for that. Right. So I sort of used what I learned at school right. to train. That kind more of propel of, you almost. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and not only went to school, you got a master's degree. Yes, yes. All right, so he's not just a good-looking young kid, man. He's a smart <laughs> kid, right? So um, I, go back to that. Like, you always hit the ball long. Did you ever in a million years think, like, you'd be competing on just, you know, for lack of a better, balls out just hitting the golf ball? Absolutely not. Right. I I always thought when I saw those guys hitting at 400 yards, I was like, that's impossible. Right. I really, I really, it's, it, and it, it's, it's, it's crazy because, it really is. It's it's dedication every yeah. single day, you know, working out, you know, working with a coach on your swing, um, yeah. you know, stretching. It's it's crazy. It's full dedication. Yeah. I mean, it's really the real deal, right? I mean, I think, you know, uh, I did a little bit of research for the podcast on long drive and um, I have a little bit of background. Jake knows, uh, uh, Jacob knows that um, I was working with Crank, which was the OG, if you would, they uh, a distributor of golf clubs. Every long driver hit one, right? Um, and I remember watching like my first one in like in the eighties, if you would on like network television. Um, and then I actually attended a couple of them. Um, we live, we're here in Philadelphia. There's a, a competition, the pro world or pro long drive. It's no now defunct, but, um, they used to have a competition, the Remax competition in Atlantic city. So I'd go to that and it was like this, this incredible, like euphoric atmosphere and these big monsters, men, man, just snapping drivers and just hitting crazy long shots. Most of them out of bounds, right? Cause you got to keep, it's not just about how far it is. You got to keep it in a 60 yard grid if you would. But, um, and you fast forward or juxtapose that to today. We just got back from the ultimate uh, long drive mid Atlantic championship where this kid won. Um, but it's a different vibe, right? It's professional. I mean, these people, there, there are a couple different coaches now, which never used to happen, right? Um, there's industry gurus. We have like a spot guy named Bobby Peterson. He's known for, you know, everything long drive. That, none of that stuff even used to happen. So it was more like this one-off kind of competition, if you would, or contest, I should say, 
now it's a full blown sport. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, uh, you know everybody's training with you know coaches. Right. Um, there's more sponsorships. Yeah, right. Um, I think a lot which we're looking for anytime. Yeah. So anyone out there who wants to sponsor us, let us know. I think that um, you know, a lot of people are trying to grow the sport. You know, especially with social media now. I yeah, think yeah, all, yeah. A lot of the top guys have like a big following. A lot of um, and I think that that's the goal is just to keep growing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Fast forward, like when you started in long drive, you made a commitment. The kid has quit his job. I say kid respectfully because I'm 59, right? So he's quit his job. He's quit drinking, got a dietary, you know, a, a workout program, a swing. I mean, the 100% committed in, right? Is there anything that you can point to like that you learned from just your short time? It's not even been a year yet, right? From when you first started and you're like, you know what? The, he actually drove to Canada, right? <laughs> just didn't really know anything about it and just said, F it, I'm going to compete. To fast forward to today, anything like, you know, that sticks out in your mind, you're like, hey, man, I wish I'd known that or sooner. Um, I think that the biggest thing is just, you know, the dedication that mm -hmm. you need to have. Um, it really is a full time job yeah. to get better, just like any other, you know, profession. Right. Um, I think one of the big things is it's not just about how far you hit it. It's about how straight you hit it. Yeah, because, yeah. You know, so that's why, you know, I recommend, you know, getting a swing coach and, you know, working on your swing because at the end of the day, in my first ever competition, I hit all six out of bounds. Yeah. You know, I was hitting it far, but doesn't matter. it doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they got to stay in that grid, which is narrow, yeah. very narrow. When you're up there on that uh, platform hitting, it's, it's narrow. Yeah, it's I mean, not what people expect. Yeah. People, th when you say, oh, I, you got to hit it within a football field, right? You say that in a bar to someone, they're like, oh, that's easy. Yeah. It's not easy from looking over a top, going to his point, going down typically and 400 yards away, everything gets smaller with time and distance, right? So it, uh, it definitely is not easy. And by the way, from the rule perspective, um, a lot of times the ball can't go out of bounds and come back in, in, in some of these competitions that we're in. So, um, Tell, talk to us a little about the, the Mid-Atlantic. We went to the Mid-Atlantic. Um, we, we knew we were going to do good, right? We, we put some, some time and energy in. Um, we're, we're changing up a little bit on J uh, Jacob's swing, but not a lot because we're still towards the end of the, swing, of the, uh, of the season here. And um, we won. We absolutely, he won, right? So talk to us a little bit about what that was like, the competition, what it felt like to win, get your first real check. Yeah, it felt, it felt fantastic. And I think that the big reason is, you know, we went in there prepared. We had a plan, you know, our, you know, workout program, swing program. Yeah, warm up. Yeah, warm up. I think that it was just, you know, going in there with a plan was the biggest difference right. between the other competitions, you know, um, and getting balls in play. That was our main goal, I think, you know, as many balls in play as possible, you know, and I think that that's, the biggest difference yeah, between yeah, yeah. Uh, now and then uh, previous competitions. And I think that we just keep building on that for the championship in September. Yeah, it's nerve wracking, isn't it? There's a lot of pressure. Yeah, there is. I mean, golf. people like I played competitive golf in my 20s and and um, it's not the same, right? You can go out and shoot 72 on any given day, right? With your buddies or whatever. And then, you know, throw up an 80, you know, the very next day in competition and for no, no reason, right? It's just not working. So um, I noticed that um, even just in a short time, we've been together a couple of weeks now or a little bit over a couple of months now. Right. Um, I know I saw you get a little nervous in the beginning there. You know, um, he's not one, like he's not the typical guy that, uh, in a long drive where he's all amped up and, you know, screaming and yelling. It's just not his persona, if you would, but talk to us about the nerves and, and how that affects you out there. Um, I would compare it to just every shot. It's almost like being on the first tee, mm. you know, where everybody's With people watching. watching. Yeah, exactly. Right. Everybody's watching you. Um, so, you know, there's some, some nerves there. And I think that's one thing I always think is like the most important thing is the accuracy, because once you get that one ball in play, you only need one in play right? Um, out of six. So once you get that in play, then, you know, you loosen up a little bit and you can swing yeah, yeah, harder, yeah. you know, and get one in there. And um, I think that was the biggest difference. Yeah. Know, recently. He, um, I'll share a quick uh, fun funny story now because we won, but um, in the, um, in the qualifying round, uh, I think it was the first time, first time we hit, right? You hit the first ball out of bounds and then you just grab the second ball. Yeah. You get, for those who don't know, you get six balls, you got to hit it in six balls inside of two minutes and 30 seconds. And 
it doesn't, it sounds, some people say both, right? Sometimes people say, oh, it doesn't sound like a lot of time. Some people say, oh, that's a lot of time. When you're in it, it goes a lot faster than what you think, right? Yeah, it does. So, and, and we practice this all the time, right? You, you can't just get up there and bang, bang, bang. You know, you got to relax and go through your routine and all that. So Jacob gets up there, he hits the first one out of bounds. And I'm, I'm like looking around just, you know, trying to get my wits about it. And he'd already hit a second ball. And I'm like, oh man, this is not going well. So uh, he relaxed a little bit and, and the uh, the rest is history. He won, so pulled it off, man. So um, I think a lot of people don't even know the history of, of long drive. It's been around competitive since the 70s and pga pros used to compete in it. jack nicholas won four times um they used to do it at the pga um championship if you would so it has a long story past the the longest drive in any competition is 515 yards 515 yards i mean that is absolutely mind-boggling that was with a, a persimmon wood shaft all right, persimmon wood head and a steel shaft and only 42 inches. Jacob's hitting a 48 inch shaft, right? Um, and it is, you know, super, super high tech. The equipment today is everything, right? Um, and so there's, I, I see a day and we'll talk about this, but I see a day where 450, 500, that's the norm, not the record. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Especially with the technology and the, right. tr and the training swing coaches, you know, I mean, the driver we're using right now is like you said, 48 inches and it's 2.5 degrees. That's like a putter. Yeah, Basically yeah. that is a putter. It's like hitting a really yeah. long putter. In fact, that's too funny. My putter's three degrees. Yeah. So when you, when you talked about how narrow the grid is, you also have to think about that, you know, yeah, it's, it's that low point. of a degree with that long of a shaft and you're swinging, you know, the longer I've tried professional I'm swinging it close to, you know, 150, a little bit over 150. Yeah. So like. It's yeah. tough to get it. Ball speed is approaching 250, two, yeah. 230, yeah. 250. I think right? the record right now is 240 miles an hour. Yeah, 256, I think I just saw. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And it's nuts. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. Um, I think that's that when we talk about equipment, um, I, I don't think that can be overstated, right? I think about what he just said. His driver is the same loft as my putter, right? That just, blow, I didn't even think of it that way. That blows me away. I've hit his clubs, right? Um, they go right into the ground. <laughs> So, and it, it, I look at the club and it's like, it, it's the club's fault, right? But at three degrees, right? If you're not swinging with that swing speed, right? Um, the ball just can't get up in the air. I mean, the physics are against it and it just can't get up in the air. So um, it's amazing. One of the things that is ironic about Jacob's swing is that he's probably, uh, and you'll, you'll agree or disagree, but probably one of the most fundamentally golf swing sound wise, meaning like it looks when you're in comp competition, it looks like you're taking a drive at the local country club within reason. Right. Yeah. I mean, his club comes way back or whatever, but it's not this monstrous swing that we see from a lot of long drivers. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, I agree with that. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of a strength and a weakness at the same point. Right. Yeah. I would, I would think that, you know, it's gotta be a combination of both. Yeah, right. Um, you know, getting that club back right behind your uh, head and, you know, getting a lot of turn is, is the goal right now, you know? So I think that having that, um, a lot of guys are very, very good at golf, you know, that are doing long drive, right. um, you know, so it's a big advantage to have that better golf background. Um, so then it's just, you know, pushing it a little bit farther, if that yeah, makes yeah, yeah. sense. Yeah. And I think there, you could juxtapose that again. Some of the guys never played golf, right? There's division one athletes that got hurt yeah. somehow or whatever. Um, there's guys, we, we saw a guy at the one competition that was in the pro or in the, uh, yeah, it was on the, uh, no, the amateur side, the, just a regular muscle head type of guy. Right. And yeah. uh, with a regular driver. Right. And still hit it 300 some plus yards right i mean for what he was what he was up against and what he presented with meaning with the equipment a 46 inch driver and just a probably a 10 degree or I mean, probably like a nine degree but uh you get the point right this guy did okay right so i it's all over the place right um jacob and i there's two real tours basically now there's the ultimate long drive which we just talked about and uh that he won it in uh in baltimore and then there's the world long drive right um, they're both, it's almost like the PGA and live almost, right? I don't know that one's better than the next. All right. One's more of an OG than the next, right? World golf or the, uh, world long drives a little bit more, you know, a stable, let's say, right. Um, and more secure, but, um, what's cool about long drive is you can go back and forth, right. Between the two different tours. Um, as long as you qualify and he's qualified on both sides. Um, we were in Atlanta up against the world's finest. What was that experience like for you? Uh, it was awesome. You know, when I first started, I was like, I never thought that I'd be 
going up against these right. guys. Right, Maurice Allen, yeah. all these guys, right? Yeah, these, these, you know, these legends that have won right. at, at the highest level, you know, and they're swinging. Like, like I said, when I first started, it was like 400 yards. That seems impossible, right. you know, and with a lot of training, but, you know, and then being up against them, it was, it was really cool. It was yeah. a great experience. Yeah. And it was basically a dream come true when you yeah. were starting, starting it, a long drive. It was amazing, man, to watch. First of all, it was hot beyond hot. Right. It was like 98 degrees and 98 percent humidity, which is not good for ball flight, by the way. Right. We were hitting into an actual hole. Right. Of a, of a uh, golf course, a par five with water on the left. And I don't care what anyone says. Anytime you see water in golf, it doesn't go well. Right. Um, and, um, and a lot of undulation. So there was a lot of factors into winning that. It's not like it was just a flat football field and whoever hit the farthest one, you know, you had, if you caught the right side of the, of the grid, you got a better role than if you're on the left side, if you would. So, um, and he competed against, I think I counted like six of the top 10, right. And currently Colton, all these guys that are absolutely, you know, at the height of their game, if you would, and beat a lot of them. Right. Um, did you take anything away from Atlanta? Like any, anything that stood out, any mistakes that you made that you wouldn't do again? Any thoughts? Um, yeah, I think that one of the big things was just, I felt like I was almost trying to guide the ball in play mm. instead of just going up there and doing my thing, you know, and getting a, getting a, you know, rhythm and yeah. swinging hard. And cause I felt like we were prepared, um, you know, swing, swing wise, you know, and I think that could going, if I went back again, it would just go up there, you know, relax and just swing hard. Yeah. You know, fair enough. Be, I don't think that you can think about your swing during a long drive. Yeah. Right. It's, it's all the preparation, right? I always use the, the, uh, the analogy of like the armed services, right? Not, can't, not, I don't in any way want to compare what we do to that, but these guys drill, 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 drill. So that when bullets are flying, they don't think about anything, right? They, yeah. There is no time to react. They just, they're hoping that that training, um, sports in general are the same in that regard, right? We, we hope that we can just focus on executing on what we're trying to accomplish in your case, just hitting an absolute snot out of the golf ball. Right. Um, and not worry about anything else and hope that that technique and all that time and energy absolutely went into that. Um, I'll tell you what I learned from the competition in Atlanta, two things. One, these guys are good, yeah. right? They are way more prepared than I ever thought they were. Right. Um, there's a, there's an occasional crazy guy that shows up. Right. Uh, but there, a lot of these guys are, are, purebred athletes, right? And, you know, if they're all, you know, type A personalities. <laughs> they're all, you know, these big giant, you know, uh, staples of men, if you would. The other thing I learned, the importance of getting one in. Right? Yeah. You Out of six balls, it's easy just to go flat out and, and just try to hit it as hard as you can. But then the guy next to you wins with a 330-yard drive. And you're like, oh, my God, I just hit that one 415, but it just bounced out. And we get up and uh, end up not getting any points for that round. So to me, that was... And that's something you know going in, but it it just resonates just a little bit more. It's it stings a little bit more when it doesn't happen, right? So the importance of having a strategy, right? Um, Jacob and I talk about all the time, like you know, there will be days where you wake up where we're we're trying to hit inside to out on the golf ball to get a little bit of draw, but there'll be days where we're fading the ball. In Atlanta, you're fading the ball, right? Yep. In uh, in Baltimore, you were drawing the ball. So, and that's not something you can actually just change on the fly. You got, you know, you wake up that day, you're drawing the ball. You wake up that day, you're fading the ball. But you got to be able to roll with those punches, if you would, and figure that out on the fly because you only got a couple rounds to figure it out, yep. right? So, uh, so he's qualified now for the World Long Drive Championship. So the ultimate World Long Drive Championship will be there September 25th. I think it's a three-day, four-day competition, yep. right? Yep. So uh, what do you think? Um, I think that, you know, we're going to just lock in for the next 30 days, you know, do our thing, train for it. And I think this time that we're going to be a lot more prepared. Yeah. I think that, you know, right now we're doing drilling, you know, every day, hitting balls, you know, every day, working out, stretching, you know, just complete dedication to it. Yeah. And I think we're going to go in with a plan, you know, get balls in play, like we said, right. you know, be relaxed, have the swing, you know, down and just, you know. Do, the th do do it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, we can win, though, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's no, I mean, I, I think there's been times in my, um, I played hockey at a pretty high level, played golf, pretty high level. Um, and there were times where, like, I knew I didn't have a chance, right? Whether it was team sport or an independent sport or whatever. Um, we got a really good chance. I mean, not not just saying that just to pump you up, man. We got a really good chance. I mean, the kid hits balls 400 plus in competition. Um, that, that's, that's, that's more than most, right? So all we need is just a, a little bit of, of, 
I don't want to say luck, right? But that preparation and that preparedness and, um, and we just got to execute. We've got to execute, right? So um, I'm feeling really good about it. And uh, he's right. We're we're laser focused right now on speed, right? Yes. Um, just trying to get. It's funny again. Get the uh, the B- Bobby Peterson guy, the expert that we talked about in the space. He's a ballistics expert, right? And he literally has ballistic reports written down on a piece of paper. Jacob and I both saw him, man. Um, but he's calculating long drive just like a bullet, right? Just like a sniper does, for crying out loud. Um, and that's probably heir to some of his success, right? He knows what physics do, right? Um, I'm no physics expert, but we have a full data uh, sim behind us, so I'm a pretty good expert on the, on the golf ball data. And uh, so, all we're really trying to do is get his swing speed and more importantly, ball speed up just a little bit. And we're convinced that if we do that just a little bit, that'll propel us to another upper echelon of competing uh, more so than ever. Hey, Jacob, wh- where do you uh, where do you see the sport? Do you see the sport doing anything in the near future? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's, you know, a lot of really great athletes in it right now. Um, you know, Kyle Berkshire, Martin Borgmeyer, mm. super, super popular guys, you know. Um, those are the names, you know, even if people don't watch long drive, they say, Oh, I know who that guy is. Yes. You know, that's the, they're hitting over four hundred yards. And, you know, there's uh I think that with social media, I think that's important to really push it out. I'd like to see it be more um, you know, on television so that um you know fans can watch it yeah, yeah i like like the idea of streaming it on social media i think a lot of guys have a huge following where i think their followers would love to see them you know hit more golf balls you know everybody loves to see a golf it's ball crazy. go over 400 yards. i know right i was just telling someone yesterday it's a, it's a dumb analogy but it's true you know people go to nascar to see crashes right I mean, they definitely, they go there as a sport. I'm not saying they want to see anyone hurt, but that, that air of like, oh my God, what could happen? And then, you know, seeing someone get out of a car that's just been, you know, mauled. Um, he's right. There, there's a certain level of violence behind hitting a golf ball 400 yards that just people just, it's like boxing almost, right? That just people just are in awe. I mean, you look at the stands and there's no universal type of individual. They're, they're, they're everybody, right? Yep. I mean, um, it, it really transcends um, demographically, I think, a lot of different groups. Um, yeah, I, I think I see the sport similar, man. I, I I think it had a little bit of a lull, right? Some, you know, the the, the league was a little bit mismanaged and they, they lost their TV contract. Um, the uh, World Long Drive has an ESPN contract, so um, that's positive. And um, the Ultimate has a streaming service that they're, they're putting out. So um, I think that's all positive, right? I cannot imagine that it's not, you know, up and to the right, if you would, as far as viewership. And, and I think there's more coaches than ever, right? There's more t- talk around technique than ever. There's more talk around what equipment and how it fits than ever. So I really see the sport really starting to develop its own kind of, you know, f- not only following, but its own niche, if you would, right? Um, you know, there's that point in time, like, you know, right now is a perfect example. Hockey's not back. Football's not back yet. If they kind of find found their niche as far as time frames or whatever uh, and i think they're doing that there's no coincidence the world champions are right the championships are right now right so i i think there's it's, there's nothing but positiveness you know in the space if you will so um yeah so we're hoping that not only we capitalize on jacob's career and, and winning but we're hoping the sport in general takes off um talk to us about your social media man you do pretty good you got a couple of videos that uh got a million hits right yeah so my social media is i focus on um well, let me back up a little bit. Yes. I know I said uh, earlier that I did strength and conditioning. Yeah. So I originally started just doing strength and conditioning videos for everybody, you know, just work out how to get in shape. And, you know, then once I started doing the long drive, I said, you know, why don't I go into more of a niche and do just golf? And once I started doing that, it really blew up on I'm at 73,000 followers in only six months about. That's amazing. Yeah, all so, organic. Yeah. All organic. Yeah. Yep, just, you know basically my videos are you know hit as far as you like hit the ball farther yeah every video you know do these exercises and you're gonna hit farther and they're the exercises i do so i know they work yeah. so um and I obviously i'm not doing it look <laughs> at me man so i know i get a, i've gotten a lot of good feedback on yeah. them and um you know and just that's the plan is to kind of you know i want to use the social media to grow my long drive career essentially because yeah, i think they go hand in hand yeah yeah so jay golf fitness right yep. on instagram right pretty much on anything right yep. um yeah I, I think you never know what's gonna so we have a video of me and rory swing that's gotten almost uh, 30 million views 
Um, it's a 12 second video. I was, I had a couple, like four beers in me when we took the video and never once in a million years did I ever think that would happen. Right. But that's the way social media works. Right. If you watch his stuff, you'll, you'll see he has an air about him that is attractive to people, meaning that they, they want to view it. Right. And there's nothing crazy long. You don't do any real long form stuff. And it's very pragmatic. Like to your point, Hey, do this stretch and you'll hit him, you know, 20 yards further. Hey, do this and you'll feel better. So I think it's a really a, a good way to approach social media. That's not only growing, you know, social media, if you would, but it's growing golf and growing long drive. And I think both of us have that in common. Like right? we definitely want to see the sport grow. We definitely want to, you know, make it, make a difference for lack of a better. Right. Um, Jacob, any last thoughts, any parting thoughts? Um, just, you know, basically like I've been excited to keep training for long drive. I love it. It's yeah. very fun. Right. You know, every time I go to do a session, you know, here and we're hitting balls, it's awesome. Right. Um, and I just want to keep training for it and I'm excited for the championship coming up. Yeah. I, I, I think it's well said, man. I'm excited. I, I love it. Again, I get, to, I'm fortunate enough, not only to coach the guy, but to see, you know, 400 yard bombs every week. right? And it's just, we had a 14 year old kid who's one of our students, if you would, was in here and just his face lit up after the first ball. It was like, Oh my God, like who is this? So you can't really tell, but the guy's six, four, 240 something pounds. I mean, he's a big dude, man. So, um, it's, uh, it's in, it's violent. That's yeah. the best word. <laughs> it's just violent, man. So, all right. So look, Hey, uh, Thanks for listening to the podcast. This is our, I think I said in the beginning, our 169th episode. So thanks for everyone for listening. We just got some uh, stats back. <laughs> we're, number, we're the number five podcast in, in Poland, whatever that means. <laughs> right? So, uh, but we're like, you know, 200 now in America. We were up as high as 70 some, but uh, we're going to commit to doing more of these um, over and over again and a more consistent cadence, if you would. And I think you're going to see more of this guy, not only on our podcast, but definitely in, in sports media in general. Hey, man, good luck. Hey, thank you, Dan. All right, you're going to do fantastic. Um, hey, listen, you can pick up um, any of our videos or all of our podcasts on all the uh, the mediums, if you would, or Marketplace. We're on Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. We're on all the social media channels as well, at Imagine Golf. And Imagine is I am. Uh, I-M-A-G-E-N. I can't believe I couldn't even spell that. Um, thanks to PXG for their sponsorship. And uh, here's to getting you the game and the swing that you've always imagined.